Let's do this thing again, guys. What's what's going on? Um, just just got done. Well, I didn't get done watching the Giants and the um, and the Bears. Um, I watched it tonight. I I built my night around it. I guess that's what you do. Um, I guess that's what some people do. Some people go out and um, I don't know, drink alcohol, meet girls, do that kind of stuff. I what I did is I watched. Um, Tonight I was able to watch this game and it, it was a treat. It was it was a wonderful performance tonight. Um, you know, for this video I want to go over the quarterback play, but then there's going to be another video that I'll take even more notes on before. And uh, I just want to look at Marcus Golden. Like some of his sacks tonight might be really fun to look at. Some of the defense. Um, da -da 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 -da. But, however. I mean, Eli Manning tonight, I mean, that's really good velocity, right? I mean, the running game, um, just, just even right here, um, you get a little pass interference. But even Rod Smith, you know, former Dallas Cowboy, you, you know, Rod Smith seems like he's 35 just because he's that powerful back. He's kind of that throwback Peyton Hillis type of back. Could be 25. And even when he was 25, people probably thought he's 38 years old. But he has a nice burst, and... And tonight, you know, Rod did put the ball on the ground in the second quarter. But Rob, like, showed – Rod, excuse me, showed good vision tonight. But Paul Perkins really was explosive in a way that he hasn't been in a lot of summers. And look at Kevin Zeitler there. Just take that guy. Just move him. Look at Mike Remmers. Just absolutely bully the second team. Nate Solder gets all the way down the field. So just an incredible finish there by the offensive line. And it was just fun to watch the offensive line play this type of football and make the drive convenient for Eli Manning and convenient for the offense. You see what a great job there uh, Jalapio does um, getting that guy out of the way. And just the offensive line was grooving tonight. And, yeah, you could say it's first, second stringers, but I don't really care. Um, Red Ellison protecting the ball as it goes down because when you're, when you're getting tackled from behind as well, you want to be able to protect the ball, right? You know, because you see a lot of fumbles on this kind of play. So this was good. Kwiatkowski comes in there, and uh, and Rhett's just able to take that. So, And then last throw I'll show you from Eli Manning. This was even better than the touchdown to me. Um, just just so much velocity. I just, I just, I, Eli just looks fresher, and um, this, this, this ball was just, just completely just a, just a rope. This was a frozen rope by Eli Manning here. Foot in the ground, Eli Manning under duress. And, uh, yeah, just tons of arm strength. And then you get Fowler breaking a tackle, getting into the end zone. Just a huge momentum boost for the team. Not like the team needs any momentum. We're, we're, the Giants are, have had an incredible offseason, and, the Giants had an incredible performance tonight. Um, just incredible. Defensively, um, getting the safety, getting the four sacks, getting X-Man a sack. This defense played tremendously well. Grant Haley um, in all the right spots defensively. Uh, he had a wonderful game. Ballantyne, other than giving up that long pass, I, the first half the defense was lights out good, lights out. And Pat Shermer said, I mean, the turning point in this game was after Daniel fumbled, getting that missed field goal. That was just incredible. Those two sacks there in, in, on that series, getting the missed field goal after Daniel fumbled deep in the Giants' territory. And then the Giants go down and get points of their own. That was a six-point swing in the game and, and was absolutely huge. So, anyway, let's look at some Daniel Jones. We've spent enough time laboring here. Let's look at a little Daniel Jones. Nice. Computer goes out. Great. Great. Just what I wanted, right? Just when I said it's time for Daniel Jones, the computer goes out on me, you know? So, uh, you know. Uh, all right, all right. Let's go to condensed, and now let's. we're finally going to get to Daniel Jones. Or should I do the whole recap again with Eli Manning and showing that just incredible first drive? I'm way ahead, way ahead of schedule. Jeez, what am I doing? 
I'm way ahead of schedule. And, and I got a jumpy mouse, okay, just, just so you know. Just so you guys know, the mouse is jumpy tonight. The mouse, the, the mood of the mouse, the mouse tonight, this mouse is, is hyper. This mouse is too much sugar. This mouse is not going to bed anytime soon. This mouse is just completely frustrated. I don't care. You guys could skip ahead. I don't care. I mean, I care a little bit. I want to eventually get to the Daniel Jones tape, right? Eventually. I want that to, <laughs> I want that to happen. Oh, the Bears made a field goal, and they couldn't beat the damn Eagles last year with that damn field goal. So Daniel Jones starts off. We get a great run to start us off, I think. Rod Smith again. The offensive line. I mean, let's go back. I mean, come on. Come on. Look at Remmers. Look at Kevin Zeitler. Look at Zeit. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Willie with the, with the block. Willie with the finish. That's what I want to see from Willie. That finish. Second and four. Get a toss. Not much doing. Get a stupid hold on Elijah Penny, which is very obvious if you go back. Elijah Penny grabs Nick Winikowski. So stupid, right? So you're thinking second and 14, right? You're thinking, oh, no. Oh, no. Second and 14, what the heck is going to happen? Daniel Jones throws a dart. Daniel freaking Jones. I mean, the, I'm not going to talk that way the whole video. But the point is, that uh, the, let's go to this throw. Why it gets you so excited? Because this linebacker, you know, 55. 55 is coming over here, you know. 55 is coming over here. He goes to the back. It's actually, this throw, is, it beats number 28 of the Chicago Bears. This throw is a frozen one. It's a frozen rope. I didn't see this at Duke. Daniel Jones has improved so much. I mean, so much. Look at his footwork. His footwork is calm, and the ball's coming out. A lot of velocity. A lot of velocity in the intermediate game. He showed some of that at Duke, but now he's playing with some NFL wideouts. Just Shermer's done an amazing job thus far with Daniel Jones, and this throw is is really incredible. I mean, Daniel Jones is so funny. He definitely doesn't overstride. Um, he's just very disciplined as a quarterback, and it looks like Cutcliffe's done a heck of a job with this kid, man. I mean, look at Jones, just so under control. This ball is just frozen. It's just a beautiful ball, and he just hangs so far back. And what I'm going to take out of Jones, like what what has Daniel Jones taught me in my life today? So Daniel Jones has taught me that he's using a little eye manipulation because we got to get that we got to get that linebacker off, and we got to keep this safety. We can't get this safety over here. We need this safety to keep going back, and that's what happens. And this ball, look at this. I love how he's already beginning his throwing motion here. That's what Darnold did last week. It was so effective. The timing is just and then and then there is the finish. There's the finish. And he does have some momentum. Let's let's check his back leg. The back leg strides <laughs> into the throw. <laughs> And it's a little different than Mitchell Trubisky, the the, the back leg of Daniel Jones, but uh, the guy, uh, great anticipation skills. Charges in, charges in, and that's what Cutcliffe taught him, you know, because at Duke, the field is just so hot, you know, and he's out in 101 degrees working on footwork. And here you see that left foot sliding. I like that. I just like how... It's a quick drop. I like that he's ready to throw quickly. He's not dilly-dallying. He's not giving up the pocket. I just feel comfortable with Daniel Jones leading this offense. I do. I feel comfortable. And then Daniel Jones right here. Um, boy, I like that. That was maybe his best play. One of the best plays of the night was this play. Uh, you're a homer, Spencer. You're a homer Giants fan. Well, here Daniel Jones is looking left. Again, the foot is sliding back, okay? Look at that. Look at the flexibility of his foot. It's unbelievable. But Daniel's sliding back, and then Daniel Jones, 
what a mature decision, right? It's like you're going to the bar. It's like you see two girls. I don't know if I should go out with that one. Oh, this is going to be a sloppy morning. This is going to be sloppy. We're not. Are we going to get into trouble? And Daniel Jones acting like a veteran. Looks downfield, doesn't see anything, and immediately will take his check down as he's going to get hit. Wonderful awareness, wonderful play, and just keeps the drive going. And that, that that's the type of play that you need, you know. That's not a play that's going to gonna fire a ton of people up. But if you love football, you love quarterback play, and then Daniel Jones, just the touch that this guy, I did not know that this guy has this type of arm strength. I mean, this guy has some, some arm strength. And, and the way that this ball's thrown in in college, like he looked like a Tannehill, but this this throw right here, he really just looks good, it, and it's it just throwing with great touch, and he really is thinking through the game, and he just really looks good. The footwork is just it, it's night and day from college. In footwork, he had so much happy feet. Shermer and and Mike Shula. The footwork has improved. Daniel has done a tremendous, tremendous job, okay? Let me pause the video right there. I know that this is the second week of preseason. I know that this is his second game. There's a chance Daniel Jones might not be good in the NFL. There's a chance he might be incredible in the NFL. Right now, he's performing very well through two games of preseason, and it was just fun in a vacuum to watch him play the game. I'm not going to make any bold proclamations on Daniel Jones. It's just fun watching the guy improve, okay? And the guy has improved, and it's fun. And it's fun to see him play in Shermer's offense. It is. And I enjoy every time he plays football. So there you go. And the guy has just really improved. And I like that Gettleman saw that this guy has the ability to make this type of throw. Because I at college, I didn't know if I saw that ability. And he's just playing confident football right now. And just the touch that he has on the football is just really, really awesome to see. Okay, so then, you know, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. Pump the brakes right on Daniel Jones' hype train. The guy fumbles here, okay? Jalapio. The thing is, is it's a quick snap because really Cody Latimer, if you really watch this play and you see the replays, he did get his feet down, but the ball was getting bobbled at the end. So the Giants are like, hurry it up. Snap the damn ball. Snap it. And Daniel Jones is drifting left, doesn't secure the snap, okay? Does not secure it in his hands. And an elementary mistake that is very preventable. And Daniel Jones went into the game later, and he worked on and he worked on securing the snap. Jalapio was out, so Spencer Pulley came back in. This is a mistake that is not that scary. Um, uh, hopefully, it doesn't happen in a game situation. Um, but it's it's a mistake where pretty much it's like get the snap. That's like the the way to fix the mistake is just to catch it. And then proceed on your way. All right. Giants have to punt. Good directional punt by uh by it's not wing, it's uh I forget actually the punter for the Giants. I forget the name of the punter. Um but I think it's Riley Nixon. I think he is the punter for the Giants. He did a good job. So here, got a good play action fake. And I like this throw from Daniel. The pocket is ridiculously good. And you just see what's so interesting about Jones is that he almost pulls up and, and like it, it, everybody's unique in the way that they throw the ball. What I learned from Jones is not to overstride. Like maybe that's the life lesson. Um, but Daniel Jones here, if you watch him come forward with this, um, his body, it definitely, he has a strong core, right? And his, his lower body, though, he really doesn't come forward that much. I mean, it's so funny how his body just kind of hangs back when he throws the football. That was a smart miss by Daniel Jones because that was going to be intercepted. The, the defender was closing on him. That was an underrated miss. You had to miss there or it's going to be pick six city. So if that ball hung, on, hung up there, it was going to be a pick six. Now let's see if the backer might have been open. 
Uh, maybe he could have swung it around and hit the check down. He probably needed to hit Paul Perkins. So that's something that you'll watch on film, right? Because if, if Golden Tate is, is taken, uh, you have a great offensive line. You have the first stringers in. Well, yeah, just take the check down. Actually, excuse me, it's second stringers now. Um, okay. So on this series, too, I like this third down throw. This was a good throw by Daniel Jones. The receiver just slipped. This was a, this was a tremendous ball. Guy's playing really good football. He had a really good game again tonight. Good footwork there. Active feet, active feet, active feet. Over the top delivery. And the guy just slipped. It was a really good throw. And uh, just slipped there. And I still like the throw. Eh, maybe it was behind him on second look. It's just a tough play to kind of see in real time. But the slipping did not help. So maybe the guy could have caught it. But but with the slip, it's impossible to judge wherever he could have caught it. Looks like Jones, the thing I like about Jones, he really thinks his way through the game. And that's, that's something that, that the great ones have done. Like a Peyton Manning has fought his way through a game. Drew Brees, all great quarterbacks actually possess that. So there Jones going from one read to the next. Naturally, he's going to be late. And, um, yeah, he was a little bit late. So that's life. Not everything is going to be perfect in life and in preseason week two NFL football. All right, let's go to the third drive of the game. It was a mixed bag, right? Or some people say that it was a mixed bag. But here, um, I mean, Paul Perkins, I really like this run. I, I thought Paul did an outstanding job. I thought that Marcus Golden tonight was phenomenal. Probably the best player in the game tonight was Golden. I thought Kevin Zeitler played really well. Um, defensively, uh, Kareem Martin Connolly was very, very uh, good. This hold right here on number 64, 64 just had two of the worst plays you're going to see in a while because 64 held on. To, you never hold on second and one. It's a cardinal sin. It ruins everything. E second and one is for you is made for you to either try a deep shot, try to get a huge play, so you then have third and one, and um, there a drop too. So two things happened that didn't go right for Jones. You had the drop. And you had the this, this second and one hold. And now you're in third and 11. And here, the tackle, the tight end, the tackle just is unable to get back. And uh, it's just an incredible strip. I mean, these plays are going to happen in the game of football. You know, it's Daniel Jones is holding the ball with two hands. It's not like he's holding it with one hand. He was getting ready to throw. It was just really bad timing. Yeah, you could say, yeah, he feels the rush. He feels the rush there. And now it's just a great swipe of the football. You just got to give it there to the defense. And also the protection broke down. And that was an excellent, excellent play by uh, by the defense there. Okay, that's a play that's going to happen. You know, you know, mistakes, turnovers, um, that was like offensive line related. Again, this was the stanza that won the Giants the football game. If you go back here. And uh, and Daniel Jones with a really nice tackle, actually. And then the X-Man. The thing, the X-Man was inconsistent tonight. That's what they set upstairs. I like to hear this bends pretty good. And then what a great effort. This dive from the X-Man right here, showing off the athletic ability to dive and get Chase Daniel. Great play. Great coverage by Grant Haley again. And then another coverage sack sort of thing. Daniel panics, and we get a nice, beautiful coverage sack. We then get a missed field goal. Just, just, just absolutely just incredible resiliency by the football team and something that I was just loving. I loved every – because the team dealt with the adversity in an incredible, incredible way. So Daniel Jones again accurate, ball out accurate, bouncing back from two turnovers – so tonight you got to see Daniel face his first adversity as a pro. Great cut there from Smith. Other than the fumble, Rod played well. Third and five, this was the biggest throw because this was kind of the 
you know, this was kind of the uh, the crossroads right here. If Daniel goes three and out, he doesn't have the night that he maybe has. This is the momentum type of play that he needed, and this and this this play was awesome. Daniel looking right, and then he throws this. He goes to his third read, and he throws this ball in a spot where eighty three could go up and turn up field. And just incredible recognition by Daniel to go to his third read under pressure. Really instinctive play by Daniel Jones. And a play where, again, these NFL receivers, we have three Goldens on our roster. And again, where he can make a big play happen. Uh, there the fumble happens. And we get two plays that um, were good for Daniel Jones. Um, two plays. And Daniel Jones here takes a check down, gets you in the field goal range for Aldrick Rosas. And then right here, I just didn't want to sack. You know, it's third and what is it? Third and 12. You're in field goal range. Your, your defense is playing great football. I just wanted to get some points on the board. And, you know, here the feed kind of cut out. But Daniel Jones protected the ball and we got points out of that possession. So that was... I, very ideal, and that fur down throw was just was just fantastic to see. Uh, get a safety there, ridiculous kind of Chase Daniel like moment, like a Dan Orlovsky sort of moment there with the safety, Chase Daniel, and uh, the last drive for Daniel Jones, and it really was a beautiful last series. Look at Paul Perkins. Look at the burst here from Perkins. That second gear is very exciting. We're going to need a, a three-horse running back stable. This second burst from Paul is really exciting to see. He's been having a great camp. He showed it in the game today. Second burst was there, and it was beautiful. Man, do I like that, too. That's a, that's a staple of, of Pat Shermer's offense. It's a staple of football. You leak the you leak Perkins out there, so you get the linebacker. Once the linebacker leaves, this throw is 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 thrown, and again, it's very accurate, and uh, the footwork is is good, and that was just easy money. And T.J. Jones is having a really uh, he's really making an impact. He's I think he's got to make this football team. Love it on second and one, no holdings, and I think that you might get the touchdown eventually to to T.J. to to cap off. Really a successful night of throwing the ball. Daniel Jones, uh, instead you get another laser. Just the slant routes, he's just killing it. And if Daniel Jones, both of the fumbles I think are avoidable. You know, if the offensive line protects, the second fumble is, is a little harder to avoid. The first one totally avoidable. If he avoids that, the night is like an A minus, B plus. Instead, I'm giving him a B on the night. Um, you could. I, I'm even going to give him a B plus because I I just think we saw more of Jones tonight. Again, it's very exciting to think about potential and down the road stuff with this kid. And um, if, if if during the season he needs to play, I think that the guy is going to be ready to to really function in this league. But Eli's teaching him well. Eli's playing very good football. Daniel's Daniel is going to be ready, I believe. And he's getting coached well, and I'm just very encouraged. Uh, great touch on the football. The fi so let's list kind of let's summarize the thoughts a little bit. The touch on the football, I did not see at Duke. The um, the footwork is so much quieter in New York than it is at Duke. He had a lot more happy feet. Um, the decision making is a ton more concise than it was at Duke where Daniel Jones is very skittish on decision making and here Daniel is is very decisive um, which which I really like the slant routes are incredible um, at the slant route throwing the ball with velocity I think that the Duke guys a lot he would need to throw perfect balls in order for them to catch it Daniel is still a very young guy so he's still kind of filling into his frame as an adult so he's putting on a lot more muscle. The arm strength is actually improving. You saw that with Baker Mayfield, too. The throw last year to 63-yarder to Jarvis Landry. When he was at Texas Tech, when he first got to Oklahoma, you know, D Baker Mayfield would have been a senior, and Daniel Jones came out his junior year. 
So you're seeing now what a senior Daniel Jones would have been, and a senior Daniel Jones would have been even better than junior Daniel Jones. So again, a great job by Dave Gettleman of projection um, and a great job by the scouting department. I really feel comfortable with the Jones pick, and I'm really happy that he's on the Giants. And, and overall, the team is having so much fun. The camaraderie is fantastic. Um, it's a wonderful feeling. We're going through the summer. We're taking it in stages and steps. But I feel really good about where the football team is. And uh, let's hope to have a clean week next week and uh, stay injury-free. I don't know about the second half of the game. The first half, the only injury, I think, was Antonio Hamilton, who had a groin injury. So I think that was, like, the only injury. So, um, but, but, yeah, what a fun, fun game. And Daniel Jones balling. All right, guys. Take care.